Hey YouTube, today we're going to be covering a couple 2v2 replays of suspected teammates for this upcoming RLCS season. Some of them suspected, some of them already announced, and I'll talk a little bit about whether or not I think they're going to have some success and who maybe is the better of the two teams. But first I want to talk about Salt Mine. You guys might be expecting Salt Mine coverage. Even when I didn't get to stream the live games, I covered replays of the group stage. But the reason why I'm not doing that is before there were somebody who was not uploading their own games, at least not quickly or didn't seem to mind about me covering them. That was Rizzo. This time around, the playoff stage was covered by Jorby and Yummy Cheeseman, both who are uploading their own replays or uploading their own live coverage of the game, I should say. So instead of me going back and also going over their replays and maybe, you know, taking that content from them, I don't want to do that. So you just go check them out. Go uh, check out Jorby and Yummy. They had the live recordings. I'll get the live recordings of the playoff stages later as Daniel hits a nice shot. So no worries. I'll still get to cover some in the future. And anytime that I have an opportunity to, you know, not be stealing the content of somebody else, I will cover the replays if I didn't get to do it live. But that means I am having nothing for the rest of this stage one of Salt Line, but I'll be back for the later stages. So now we'll cover some other things. We'll have some more show matches and we'll have some, you know, replay analysis like this. But the reason why we have Daniel in our POV right now, if you haven't already noticed, is Daniel. He's playing alongside Atomic. is because there is a rumored team. Daniel's going to hit another nice double. They're doing well in this game. But if you were wondering what was going to happen with version 1 and Daniel and maybe Beast Mode, the answer is actually that they're headed off. Version 1 had announced that they were going to be trying to basically sell Daniel and Beast Mode. Version 1, I think it's looking to no longer exist anymore. And Calm was going to be off the team, or at least his roster spots expired, his contract expired, and they weren't looking to renew it. Whereas Daniel and Beast Mode, I guess, were still on contract and they were looking to try and sell him. So the answer is that they seem to be headed over to Atomic on G2. Now, what is going to happen to Chicago and JNAPS? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. But we do have this video of Daniel and Atomic playing alongside each other to see how well they might do. Now, the other roster that we're going to check, if it hasn't already been clear by the thumbnail, as these guys score another goal, 5-1, is we're going to be talking about First Killer and his addition to Gen G. Gen G dropping Nolly and adding First Killer. Is this pinch on target? No way. <laughs> this, this replay of Daniel is absurd. Up 6-1. With 3.23 left, it's a good sign for this duo. They did not queue into this game, by the way, as teammates. This happened at the end of September. They just found each other against Lunar and Jimothy? Gimothy? Not really sure how you'd say that. But I'm really excited about both duos. I'll be honest, I think this is a big upgrade. Going into the break for RLCS, you know, the longest break we've seen for RLCS in a long time, it was clear that North America had to find the answer. They had to shift around and consolidate talent as much as they could because while winning in North America was one thing, nobody was standing a chance when it came time to play against EU. And the, the region has done it. The region has, has formed a couple super teams. There's no question that Daniel and Beast Mode were considered to be some of the best players. Version 1 didn't have a ton of success, but they did play well. They, they won, you know, I think it was Johnny who brought it up. They won two out of the four events they played since adding Daniel. Uh, they won Gamers 8. And then they won one of the regionals, but they didn't. They, they played in two of the regionals and kind of didn't do well in those. But still, great performance. That's Daniel and Atomic. We'll talk more about it, but this one was a quick one. I mean, it was total domination. Daniel hit some clips, so of course we had to show it off. But now let's go head over to First Killer and Chronic. We're going to check out a two's replay of First Killer and Chronic. We're on First Killer POV. And in this match, Chronic and First Killer are teaming. So, you know, maybe not trying to hide as much that they're going to be eventual teammates like Daniel and Atomic were. This was before the announcement. The announcement has officially come out. First Killer is joining Gen G, and a lot of people have Gen G and this now potential G2 roster as the two best teams coming in. And I think a lot of people are trying to decide which one's better, and I'll tell you my take. I think I feel better about Gen G's future with First Killer. I think First Killer is the kind of guy who has been rated as, you know, the best player in North America for a long time. Beast Mode, of course, has been kind of taking over that spot or at least threatening for that spot recently, I would say. But I want to say First Killer's pairing with apparently Jack and Chronic seems perfect. The culture at Gen G and, and you know the work ethic that we have been able to see and the insight into that with Gen G, I think matches with First Killer great. First Killer, you know, is coming from a team that had 
famously, you know, the biggest work, work ethic drama. And oh my goodness, what a filthy shot. It, it, it's insane that, you know, I don't vet these replays. I see who's playing them. I want to make sure that they make sense to the what we're talking about. But the fact that they, you know, Daniel first killer, they, they, Nupo, every time I look at somebody, they always get some insane shot. But either way, first killer and Chronic, you know, th these are two guys that are finding themselves as teammates. And Chronic, for the longest time, was trying to, you know, match first killer in 1v1. And a first killer, is he going to own goal? <laughs> And it's so interesting now to see Chronic get his chance with Gen G, with Jack and Nolly coming over to give Chronic his chance, and now Chronic and First Killer teammates after a long time rivals in one v one, and it seems like they work well together. What's going on? Why, why are both First Killer and Chronic seemingly trying to own goal? Chronic just doubling into his own net, but they're up two one, and and I'm interested to see what you guys have to say. Let me know in the comments if you guys feel better about the new potential G2. I think that G2 played under a Mystery Machines team name. I don't know if it's because G2, you know, didn't want them to reveal their roster yet, or they just personally didn't want to reveal it, but they played in the draw as the Mystery Machines, or Machine, and they won. They did well. A huge performance from them in that tournament. I don't think we've seen Genji alongside First Killer. That Genji actually did play in the draw as well, I'm pretty sure. But it was with Andy, not with First Killer. So Chronic and apparently Jack with Andy didn't see the same success. And listen, no offense to Andy. He is a great player. But I'm not sure there's any player in North America that would be a better replacement for anyone than First Killer. Which is actually one of the reasons why I think that Gen.G did this. I, Nolly is a great player. You know, Nolly is somebody who has a ton of success and a lot of, you know, evidence that teams that, he's are on, that, teams that he is on are high-level teams. But... When the, uh, when the first killer call shows up, you answer. You know, you just have to answer it. And that, you know, might explain why a team is getting rid of, you know, a, a player as good as Nolly. Anybody should take the, the first killer call when it shows up. So I'm sure that's how this Genji roster came to be. And, and I bet you, you know, as much as there can be not bad blood when you break up a team like that, I'm sure Jack and Chronic would have happily played another season with Nolly, but now it's with First Killer. First Killer, he's been letting Chronic go to work in the twos replay. You know, we, we planned on talking a little bit about how Daniel and Atomic played as well uh, together, but we didn't really have time because Daniel just kind of popped off. I mean, Atomic played well as, as well, but Daniel was hitting clips like crazy. This time around, Wavy and Zanil putting up a bigger fight against what is sure to be one of North America's top duos. Chronic is just trying to go on a demo spree right now. And it looked like First Killer was hoping to cut in field. I like to see that these guys are queuing together. I think they've even been recording videos because, of course, Chronic and Jack are YouTubers. So I think they've been prepping with each other. What's uh, <laughs> this, is, this one made a little bit more sense to me. First Killer demoed, or uh, you know, he, he had less space to work with and he tried. Oh my goodness, what a save to pinch against the back wall, keep it away from the opponents. Nice 360 in the process of avoiding a demo. Now with no boost left, he pre-flips into the ball to get another reset. A lot of back passing. You know, I think that's what we've noticed. Some of it seemed like silly own goals, but clearly these two feel comfortable trying to stay in possession in 2v2. And on low boost, first killer with 100 right now is just kind of waiting for Zanil to give him the ball. He's under the impression that he'll get a free possession. Now, another cut across the net. You, you know, this one proves that it makes sense for me to question it. <laughs> they did so many, like, backwards passes to the back wall and cuts across their own net that were confusing me. This time, First Killer does it, and it ends up, yes, just being a direct pass. Kickoff goal, though, immediately puts them back on the board. And with 45 seconds, can they hold on to this lead against what is a very talented duo? I mean, shout out Wavy. Wavy. Made it into the salt mine. I'm sure you'll be seeing 1v1s from him. And I think Chronic was in the salt mine as well. So three out of the four people are in the salt mine. Demo from first killer. Or sorry, demo onto first killer. He's going to reset defensively with Wavy and Zanil rushing back to stop Chronic. Chronic actually looked like he should have had a pretty easy dish. I'm not sure why he didn't. First killer diving. But keeping his wheels on the ground. Very importantly, you know, this... Deep aggressive challenge is one that does not come with a jump in order to slightly save himself. He just pre-jumped Zanil's 
clear attempt and actually redirected it to the backboard. Only slightly better off for him than it otherwise would have been. So first killer and Chronic. They might not have won this 2v2 as uh, easily as Daniel and Atomic did. And I think that the Daniel Atomic Beast Mode trio might have a bit more firepower. You know, I'll say that. I think as far as talent across the entire roster, I, I think it's there for G2. But I think this Genji team has an element that I think has proven over time to show almost more important, you know, a good cohesive team work ethic, everything else that comes with being a great Rocket League team. For some reason, I have a slight more faith, you know, hopefully G2 gets it all figured out, but I'm not really sure who's going to be that team leader that kind of drives the ethic they need. Whereas I think Jack kind of naturally falls in that position, but we'll see, you know, I, I am no expert at, uh, predicting this kind of stuff, but I think I have a good idea. I think we're definitely going to see these teams as two of the top teams. Let me know what you guys think.